Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Weeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile arts dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hiya. Do you teach in-person classes for your art, your craft, your making? And do you want to create on-demand online version to give you more control and flexibility? But sadly, you just don't know where to start or what to do. Well, I'm here to help. Tap into my knowledge of creative business challenges, my techie teaching superpowers and my years of course creation and training experience to create a unique source of help and support for you. I make course creation faster and easier for you. You cut through your learning curve, you follow a plan that works, you learn all the techie stuff too. So you can create your on-demand online course faster and easier and make money from it sooner. You can't sell a course that's stuck in your head. On Instagram, you can find me susan.l.weeks. If you go on the stitcherystories.com website, there's an online courses page on there. And so with that in mind, let's crack on and go and meet today's fabulous guest. Hello and welcome today to our lovely guest, Stacey Jones. Hi, Stacey. Hi, Sue. Right, it's brilliant to speak to Stacey and she's been on my list for quite a long while and we'll be, I'm really looking forward to sharing her story. Right, so I've just got a, a little bio here to give you a, a bit of a taste of who Stacey is. Off we go. I have lived in London for the past 17 years and I'm originally from Hull in East Yorkshire. So obviously that's where I'm from as well. Well, Hornsey. Uh, In 2005, I came to London to begin my degree at Central St. Martins. I studied BA Honours in Textile Design and specialised in knitting. Oh, crikey. I trained to be an art teacher about 10 years ago at Goldsmiths University, and I'm currently teaching art full-time to students aged 11 to 18. So Stacey's on half-term at the moment. We'll come on to that. And uh, she's got two mischievous sausage dogs called Gary and Penelope. And when she's not embroidering, Stacey enjoys swimming and yoga. So there we are. That's Stacey in a nutshell. Before we go diving off, then Stacey does really colourful, bright, I guess we could call it modern, abstract hand embroidery. I think that's a reasonable description, isn't it, Stacey? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. I feel like my, I'm just going to say, I feel like my bio made me sound really healthy at the end. Yoga. Well, a great place to end our bio, isn't it? That on a high <laughs> note. So, and uh, before I forget, the place where you can see all of Stacey's fantastic, brightly coloured work is on Instagram, and she is at by Stacey Jones. So, by Stacey Jones is where you can find all of Stacey's lovely work. Oh, right then, Stacey. So, before we dive into your story and you've got some really interesting things to talk to us about would you like to share with us what you're working on and what's got you excited oh yeah lovely well thanks for inviting me to do the podcast and really it's really nice to be here so yeah I'm on half time at the minute which gives me that kind of freedom to just focus my energy on um, my embroidery and I guess like my work changes quite a lot over time and I guess it's to do with like my life experiences Mm. and what's been like kind of happening around me so at the minute I'm working on some applique patchwork pieces Um, I guess like the backstory is um obviously when my husband was ill we kind of use the sunflower as the symbol of kind of like strength and hope because they grow towards the light you know with something that I guess gave us like a little bit of an identity and it was something that featured a lot. Yeah. So when Chris died, we used the sunflowers at his funeral service and we gave everybody one when we were there. So the room was filled with like, you know, this beautiful sea of yellow and it felt like, you know, there's a lot of positivity on what was like the worst day of our lives, I guess. Yeah. So from the sunflowers, I then started to make embroidery inspired by the seeds because I was essentially, I felt like I was 
finding myself again. I didn't really, you know, obviously know who I was, if that makes sense. Because, you know, when you grow up and together with somebody else, then when you're suddenly by yourself, it's like, you know, what what am I about? What, you know, what is it that mm. I'm, what do, you know, it's even silly things like, watching tv you <laughs> you would like you would decide it mm. together and like the weirdest thing after was like I I couldn't bring myself to watch the programs we watched together it was it was quite painful and then it was like, what do I actually want to watch it was you know so yeah that's an interesting point now before we go too far down there so you've said there Stacey that obviously your, your husband your husband's died and he was ill so that's a couple of years ago go isn't it yeah there was lots of things happened didn't there you can kind of maybe share what you want to um after you've just you've described where you're at with your work now but just to let everybody catch up then you know the the death of Stacey's husband has informed some marked changes in your work and you can see as you kind of look back through your Instagram grid for example the different phases and the different styles of work so you're at the moment you've you've been using the sunflower source of inspiration really haven't you and then you've been building building on on those I think that's where we were at I just wanted to put that into context there because I think we, we haven't said at the start so is, is that that's okay yeah yeah that's fine cool um I feel like the way my work has evolved for me in my mind it like makes sense and I guess I need to <laughs> need to explain it properly <laughs> um so I guess starting point was, you know, we had these sunflowers and they're kind of this symbol of strength. And then afterwards, um, I felt like I was trying to grow grow myself again, not start again, because I think you learn to, you live with grief. It's not something you get over. It's not something that suddenly, you know, you're cured. I feel yeah. like it'll always be with me throughout my life. So the seed were basically the symbol of renewal or growth or, you know, the beginnings of the next part of my life that I was trying to muddle my way through, I guess, in some ways. Yeah. So I started looking at the sunflower seeds and then I made drawings from them and like I was painting them. I was using fine liner pens and I started to play around with enlarging them and turning them around and layering them. And um, and then from that, I I made some embroideries and I wanted to use um, a selection of bright colours because prior to this, so last year I made a collection inspired by the seeds, but I gave myself a limited palette of ochre, grey, black and white. Right. So that was in 20, that was in 21, wasn't it? So you you found yourself in 2021 working with the seeds, but with a a, a more sombre, limited kind of palette. Yes. And it was strange because um, Hand and Lock invited me to exhibit my work amongst lots of amazing textile artists for the, the prize, which was on the at the Barge House yeah. last November. How exciting. Oh, it was amazing. It was really lovely to be part of that. Yeah. And it was strange because even my old boss, <laughs> she <laughs> was exhibiting and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like seeing familiar faces and um, meeting other embroidery artists that I'm friends with online it, it was a really nice experience and yeah. you know really grateful for that but it gave you a good boost yeah mm. and so obviously my work got put up and you know I was really pleased I felt like you know I'd spent all from obviously the beginning of the year to, right up until the November work on this collection mm. I sort of like took a step back and looked at it all and I just thought I feel like I feel like the colours need to move on I feel like I'm <sighs> Not stuck, but yeah. I feel like I'm trying. You know, I need to transition this way of trying to bring the light and the color back in. You know, and break into something else. I promised myself that going forwards, the the bright colors would symbolize finding that beauty in my life again. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. trying not to not say wallow a bit, but just just maybe try and lift my spirits a bit more. So, so I started to use bright colors, and then. What I was thinking about recently was when somebody dies, obviously Chris was, you know, the most important person in my life. He was my best friend and, yeah, you know, loved him with all my heart. And people, when they pass on, obviously there's lots of space in between. There's lots of time where you're by yourself, where you're reflecting and it's moments of silence and, and things like that. So I was thinking about the seeds again. Mm. with the drawings there's these spaces in between and I kind of feel like they almost represent those moments of stillness and quiet 
um I got lots of different fabrics I'm actually working with blue which is my favorite color and yeah. <laughs> I feel like maybe that's kind of a bit Picasso style blue period or whatever but, um, <laughs> but I really really you know I love blue so I thought I'll start with that yeah and I um I started to cut out the shapes that I could see from these the spaces in between these you know the the drawings that I've done yeah so I've started to do that and applique them onto fabric and um I've started to add these you know the technique trapunto where you cut the back of the fabric and then you stuff it so I've started doing that um and I've been working on that this week it's been quite nice because I'm actually not working within a hoop I've got a really big piece of fabric that was the other thing as well the hoop whilst I love having that security of a embroidery hoop I'm also trying to free myself a little bit more and move out from the hoop Uh um, using a big piece of fabric and letting it grow I guess right wow so there's a lot going on here that is really strongly reflecting in your work and you know I've spoke to a lot of people but I think yours is the most powerful example of how what's going on in our life or in our emotions our physical being our mental state how it's reflecting in the work that you're creating it comes across so so strongly so yes yeah, so and now you're, you're looking at as you say the space is left behind but this idea of like a turning point and escaping out of the hoop I think is quite interesting as well it was interesting what you're saying about the limited palette as well it's almost I suppose like a morning phase isn't it very somber morning colors because previous to that you've done very bright colorful images as well you know I mean I'm I'm a bit of a colorful magpie person you know I think, ooh, 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 look <laughs> something colorful I think that's probably why yeah. I started following you in the first place I'd spotted you and it's like oh yes I love these <laughs> oh, thanks. when you look at your your Instagram grid there it's you can see the different phases and styles of, of things coming along and the stories the stories behind them as well. So that's been, you know, it, it really does come across strongly. And we'll come back to this idea of scale as well, I think, because we're talking about seeds, but then there's other images that look like something out of the Hubble Hubble telescope. You know, it looks like galaxies and things, which is the other end of the the universe, isn't it? We've got from seeds or rather the other way around, I think. Was it from like the universe down to seeds? Yeah. Yeah. Um I think with that work, Chris was really, really into like space exploration. He ah, loved anything right. by Stephen Hawkins. Yeah. And he also, before he died, he started reading Richard Dawkins stuff. And I don't know whether it was almost like he was wanting some confirmation that when he, you know, passed on what was out mm. there. And that I remember him being really matter of fact, like, oh, yeah no this is this is it you know this is what I believe in and like it was it was really stoic throughout everything he was like the most selfless person Mm. he he put everybody first and never wanted anybody to worry about him and um I think his love of the idea of space exploration and things like that influenced me quite a lot and we used to watch we used to watch things like the night sky and I bought him a telescope one year and we used to go away actually when he was um, diagnosed with cancer we used to go to the south downs and each night when we were out we'd go out and look at the stars and he had like an app on his phone where he would track oh that's you know he would point out like where you know what each kind of bit was and he always liked to see the um oh what's it called Oh, the, the space station. All oh, right, yes, they can see whizzing round every every however long yeah. it takes to go whizzing past. Yeah. To be honest, my embroidery was heavily influenced by our lives and yeah. and him, and I guess it still is. Mm. It's a part of both of us all the time. And I think one of the things that I really thought about when he was ill, you know, we had this doctor saying to us, "There's nothing we can do for you, Chris. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. We're going to give you palliative chemotherapy." You know, I mean. He was early 30s at the time. Wow. And it just made me think, you know, when we think about the universe and how small we are and our place in this, but, you know, like I felt, I guess it was almost like a bit of escapism trying to focus on the embroideries with that are kind of focusing on the space or the constellations or the night sky and made using French knots. So they're (laughs) like the tiniest stitches. Sometimes people think they're beads. 
I found a lot of comfort in the repetitive nature of like right. stitch upon stitch upon stitch upon stitch. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I used to get my energy from Chris would sleep a lot when he was when he'd had his treatment, and it just completely whacked him out at times. So I'd just be stitching. And when he when he died, I um, I found every time I went to pick up the embroidery hoop and needles and threads, I felt absolutely exhausted. Try, wow. And I just felt like I didn't have the energy to stitch, whereas before I felt like I was running on this adrenaline of yeah. like, right, you know, we were literally going from week to week for the scans and, you know, has the cancer changed? Oh, has it spread? gosh, yeah. yeah. So I guess like my body after he died in the July, I think I just felt just t- so tired. I can't mm. explain it. It was yeah. like, yeah, felt like walking through treacle or something like that, you know, it was it was really like tiring but i've i feel like as as the last couple of years have gone by um i'm finding a bit more energy with my embroidery but i'm teaching full time so it's trying to snatch time to do it after work uh, yeah <laughs> well we'll 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 come back to that but it's interesting you're saying there stacy about um it made you feel really tired just exhausted picking mm. up your stuff and i guess that's part of our 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 brains are very mysterious thing you know i suppose your brain therefore at that point must have connected the state the state that you were in what you were dealing with whilst you were doing your embroidery in not very nice circumstances um it's kind of kept some of that lingering memory like a muscle memory really i suppose when i'm doing embroidery i'm feeling you know fairly grim so it's interesting that you've said that but you've also said that you're starting to pull away from that it's all part of this turning point isn't it really I think in your your designs and your in your colors and physically feeling a bit well a bit better obviously yeah I guess I I think what what was really good about um in terms of like the events that happened afterwards was um when Chris died the embroidery community came together and they Mm. all donated their artworks and we raised a lot of money for the charity and I never would have would have imagined that I I just I was blown away by the generosity and the kindness and but yeah going forwards it's like the embroidery community has been a really big help I feel like I've met virtually met really really (laughs) like lifelong friends and you know and they've been incredible and obviously my family too and but I do think that that's helping with healing process and the grieving process. For example, last year, which was the first year after Chris had died, yes. I made loads of pieces and I used gold work embroidery that I'd gone and went to a workshop at Hand and Lock and Ooh. and I learned how to do, you know, learned how to do it. And then yeah. I started using it. I loved the intricacy of using the metal threads and using the the beeswax. The process. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like intricate. And again, I think I love doing things that are really intricate and on repeat. So right. I really like the cut work technique where you, you get the you get the metal and you snip it and you're almost essentially making your own it looks like your own beads really and you're stitching yes. it all down onto felt. And it's like, you know, it's really intricate, but it's it's really nice. So I've been using that going forward. I thought to myself, what what's out there that you don't know how to do? What would you like to do? So I I went on a cushion making <laughs> course <laughs> because I wanted to I w- had an idea about making, you know, using my embroideries onto cushions. So I yeah. went and did that. Um and then a tambour embroidery course, which I loved. Oh, um, right, yes. And the gold work embroidery, and I've I've always loved life drawing, so I've been to a few sessions recently and just kind of gone done some drawing, got by myself, and or took my nan at one one of them. She came with me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was actually amazing because it was neon, it, and the models are all in neon paint. And my oh, nana is wow. one of my biggest inspirations, so she. Um, she was amazing you know like she she just came with me and was just sat drawing and it was just like it was in this pub um in south <laughs> london and we just had the best time <laughs> oh that sounds absolutely amazing a neon life drawing class gosh yeah 
Sounds brilliant, that, I have to say. I don't, no, I don't but... think we'll have any of those in Hornsey, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, <never> <laughs> I, might, I might have to decide I need to learn how to draw if that's the case. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to think. There's a, there's, there's a few things that have come to me in the past. Right, something else that um, you mentioned there about the uh, embroidery community all, all coming together and helping you fundraise. Yeah. So it's Sarcoma, isn't it? It's the Sarcoma Charity that you yes. fundraise for put that in your episode as well right so it's interesting therefore so you're at this turning point you've been learning a, a few more some some different techniques and, and and going to classes and a few things like that so what is it that got you interested in embroidery in the first place Stacey because you mentioned that in your little bio there about going to you did textile at St Martin's so there's obviously an interest there and you must enjoy drawing and art and stuff but kind of what 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 got you interested in it in the first place I guess what got me into or who got me into embroidery was my nan when I was younger she was always kind of like doing different art courses and she was doing textiles and she was doing ceramics and, and life drawing and everything and she did it all in at Hull College right and she's been like a great influence like even from a young age I remember my mum was really poorly at one point and um, my nana came to look after me and my brother mm. I remember like cutting up net curtains and um, we were cutting the flowers out and we were collaging them together to make something new and we're like dyeing yeah. bits and things like that and she's always had that influence you know in my life yeah so I went to Hull College and I did textile design and I met a tutor there called Tim Andrews and he was a, a knitwear specialist and he was tutoring us at college. Yeah. He was the person that said to me, you know, you need to go to St. Martin's. Right. Ooh. At this point in my life, I'd never been really anywhere apart from <laughs> Hull. <laughs> yeah. so I can imagine. Yeah. And um, so I applied and I went to the interview and I got in, I got onto the degree course, but I never did a foundation. I went straight on to a degree. Yeah. And if, if anybody's listening and thinking about doing a degree, I would tile if I could do it again, I think I would do a foundation before doing my degree because you sort of held into it and I think the foundation help would help a bit more. But anyway, so yeah. when I did the degree, it was the first year you you chose like different pathways like printing, weaving and knitting. Right. And be because I'd done print at Hull College, I thought, oh, maybe I'll try weaving and knitting because I wanted to know more about them. And then and then what happened was in my second year, I specialised in like machine knitting and things like that. And weirdly, I don't really do much knitting at all these days, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I loved it. I've got a knitting machine, you know, maybe you might have to bring that out again and maybe explore that. Yeah. And then obviously I moved to London and I met some my, like my best friends on my degree course. Your life sometimes makes sense when you look back and not forwards, yeah. you know, like with these things. <laughs> yeah, I think when when we like look back, we can see it, it does start to make a bit more sense. And yeah. the things that you did that you, people think, what the hell are you doing that for? Actually, then you, when you look back, you think, yeah, that really actually did make sense. But it nobody noticed at the time kind of thing. So Yeah, that's it. So you've been very creative in all sorts of different ways. And and I guess you've found embroidery along the way, really. You say you're, you're self-taught, but now now you're getting sucked into the delights of gold work as well. You'll you'll be doing um, you'll be getting your knitting machine out and then doing gold work on knitting or something like that, won't you? Next. <laughs> well, this is it. Like I know, and I think that's the beauty of it all. I can appreciate designs that are really you know intricate and almost yeah. like have a traditional vibe to them. And I guess for me, I really like because I'm really drawn to like abstract work I quite like something when it's not when it doesn't look as obvious and um yeah I think that's what I love trying to find the limitations of the materials or like with the gold work stuff I I mean I look at some of the designs the jaw dropping you know when you yeah. see like all these intricate berries and flowers and they're incredible I think I just like I said earlier really love the technique you know just the simple yes. one like cut, cut work for example yeah, and yeah, how you can yeah. piece all that together I remember, I think it was like my first year of my degree, we were knitting and I remember combining wire with the yarn mm. and it made the piece structural. And I think that's something that I'd quite like to come back to. And I've been thinking recently about maybe making my work a little bit more sculptural rather All than right. you know, this idea of breaking out of the hoop. Yes, yes. <laughs> breaking free. Because <laughs> um, I, I sometimes wonder 
whether when you're working in the hoop that the the circle shape dictates your design mm. because you, mm. you're working within that limitation of this little space and I, I guess that's what I'm trying to look at at the minute so I've got this idea of the patchwork that I mentioned and I think I'm I'm thinking about maybe adding like some gold work to that as well um yeah. so I, I, I'll see how it evolves I haven't fully made up my mind but I think that might be on the cards yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned there about the escaping out the hoop, breaking free. A guess from a couple of weeks ago, Susan Hensel um, from the States, her pieces, I've forgotten the exact word she used now, but it was the similar kind of idea of escaping. She likes to put hers are quite sculptural and folded and it's like escaping out of the rectangle, breaking out of the rectangle, moving away from the wall. We're going to terms that uh, Susan talked about as well so that's quite interesting that you're talking about a similar kind of process and you're escaping out of the out of the hoop you're bringing the, the color back in and exploring different um different techniques and so on as well so it's actually all all really exciting um is, is are you feeling excited about it stacy it, it sounds exciting from the you know the your description of what you're doing does it feel exciting for you yeah, I feel like it's almost cathartic. I, I mm. feel like it's a, for me, it's like a tool for healing. And, yeah. and also, sometimes I think there's a pressure, you, you know, for example, with social media and people yeah. are posting their work and we've well, got to keep the algorithm happy and all that sort of stuff. It's actually like a bit stressful, you know, like mm-hmm. because I had a time where I literally didn't post anything for ages. I lost loads and loads of followers and whatever. It's fine. Yeah. You know, that's just the way it is. I'm not making work to please other people. I'm doing this for myself. True. Um, so what I've done recently is I've been, I've just been reposting like my old work and revisiting it. Cause I think sometimes mm. you'll put, you'll, people can put a post on Instagram. It's lost in this vacuum in about 10 minutes Absolutely. after that. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's quite nice to re-show your old work and not be afraid of um, churning stuff out all the time. Last year I was working three days a week. So, and now I've gone back full time and I had more time to, to make my embroidery. Whereas this year, I've been working on one like large piece, which is like this 18 inch hoop. And I've used my sunflower seed drawings printed onto velvet and I've been embroidering over the top and I'm using gold work sections and it's really intricate, but genuinely I've been working (laughs) on it all year. (laughs) And I've, and I have posted a little snippet of it on my Instagram page, but I try not to put too much process stuff on there because sometimes keep that for myself a little bit and yeah I don't want to bore people with like <laughs> oh it's day two this is what it looks like day three um I don't think people want to see that or maybe they do so hopefully you know, like maybe next week I might have that finished and then we'll be able to see it <laughs> <Woo-hoo>! <laughs> <laughs> but um I think what I've learned recently is there's no pressure to make whereas I think before mm. it was like always trying to keep up and I think like that's not important really it's about it's about you and what you believe in and what you're making and things like that I'm essentially not running a business because my you know my full-time job is teaching and it's something I love and my embroidery is also another love but it's um it obviously doesn't get as much airtime because of what yeah yeah I mean I was just gonna just gonna say that point Stacey that to be honest I've really enjoyed seeing you posting older work, you know, because, you know, when when you kind of look now, it's a whole series of circles of beautiful work. And, yes, it's lovely to see the process images, as, as you know, as people are working through things. But because you've been posting the finished things and gone back and posted, anybody listening now, go, go and have a look. And it just gives a really brilliant feel for the, the the range and beauty and individuality and strikingness of your work so I've really appreciated seeing all of the finished things um so I think that's a good it's a good point I think for people to to think about we don't always need to feel pressured to be yeah feeding the Instagram monster basically and it's okay to bring things back. It's okay to remind people about some work that we did last year or two years ago or whenever. It's okay to refer people back to a blog post that we wrote five years ago because it's still valid what was written in it. And 
you know, I don't, we, we, we get quite, you know, as a society, we're talking about recycling and reusing waste things. And, and yet when it comes to our content, everybody seems to be just hurtling off. I've got to create a new thing. I've got to create a new thing, another new thing, another new thing. And we therefore, as you say, our work just then disappears in a black hole, isn't it, if we aren't careful? So I think it's been really nice to see some finished articles. So, uh, you know, well well done. Well done for you for doing that. Yeah, thank you. As a viewer, it's really appreciated. I know. I feel like it, it's been quite nice to look back at what I've done before. And I can remember, like, you know, certain points in our lives, in man and Chris's lives that were happening yeah. at the time. And I remember making the work. But what I always remember is it's like used to say, oh, I really like that. You know, and it, I would say, oh, I'm not sure about that. You know, it's like quite funny. Like I remember chuckling to myself <laughs> over some some things. Yeah, I guess like for me, looking at them, there's me- there's there's so many memories for all of them, and I almost feel like I'm evolving. And like you know, this yeah. you know, in this last week, moving out and moving bigger, like we talked about. Yeah, um, yeah. it just felt quite liberating, really. Mm. And I've got a few ideas what I'd like to do. I'd really like exhibit my work which would be really nice it'd be quite nice to maybe get a you know collection of other textile artists together and and maybe I don't know share the costs of the space or something and help put our own show on I mean that could be possible I think that'd be really exciting I mean, well you're in a good place aren't you as well in in London there's you've probably got more selection of places to do that than yeah. stuck in the edge, edges of the country in East Yorkshire for example <laughs> Well, you never know. I mean, like in the whole, like, you know, with like the city of culture yes, status yes. that they got and everything else, I feel like a lot of things were up and coming and, you know, there's some really nice things happening um, up north, as it were. Um, <laughs> so maybe, you know, that could be an option as well, maybe going somewhere different in the UK to do it. So the, an exhibition would be one thing. And then um, I've got an idea about I'd love to combine poetry with um, embroidery and have them side by side oh that sounds like an interesting idea I think as well because your work does portray and you've used it as a visual expression of emotion so Mm -hmm. I think that could work really well with poetry as well what an interesting idea oh Mm. thank you you know that's one of the ideas that I've gotten I maybe just need to get on with it and stop going, oh, this is what I'd like to do. (laughs) And then another thing that I'm kind of thinking about is uh, a while ago I made a series of embroideries which were inspired by calm breathing because at the time Chris was ill. Anxiety can rear its head at any opportunity and I remember he said to me, I'll go get your nails done, go and like treat yourself. So I went and got my nails done and I remember... (laughs) I actually felt a bit embarrassed at the time. I actually had a panic attack in while I was getting my nails done, and I was oh, crikey, slightly hyperventilating. <laughs> and the woman was like, "You okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, it's fine, yeah, it's fine." Oh. And like, all I wanted to say was, no, "Actually, my husband's really ill, and and like, this has just happened." So anyway, like, it's funny, like that it could could strike like that. So th- this event <laughs> sparked off this focusing on calm breath work, which, you know, you can, with yoga and things like that, yeah. it promotes all of that. So what I did was I, I closed my eyes and I had a pen and I got the fabric and I drew onto the fabric with each kind of breath and I just let the pen glide. And then after a, a short time, take the pen away, open my eyes and then obviously uh, look at the marks that I'd made. All right. And so then I'd use the lines and stitch into them. And I created a series of, it was called Breathing Lines, I think, at the time. I think that's what I called it. So I go to like this yoga retreat in Sussex and I got in touch with this lady there and she, Julie, and she mentioned that, you know, about maybe collaborating and doing a, a breath workshop combined with an embroidery workshop, oh. like well-being. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's something that I've been thinking about and perhaps for next year. So, yeah, I, I think for me, because embroidery helped me so much with mm. like my well-being and mental health, I think I'd like to be able to share that with other people because it has so many benefits. Even if it's gathering around a table and having a chat yeah. or just doing something new or meeting people or just getting out of the house for a bit, I think it could be really helpful. Um, so I guess, yeah, I'd like to help other people. Yeah, exhibition maybe some kind of creative little poetry book and a workshop 
Is is that all? Nothing is that all? <laughs> that <laughs> next year. I think the idea there of doing the, the the meditation and the embroidery combined, it's bringing an extra dimension to the slow stitch movement, isn't it? Really, yes. um, and I, and I love the description there of like closing your eyes, getting a pen. And you know, moving and making maps and opening your eyes. Was it quite surprising what 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 you saw? Yeah, definitely. And it's like it's this kind of idea of gestural. You know, like when you yeah. look at the painted. Like I love gestural painting as well. When you kind of see the paint strokes, like unexpected flashes of color and things like that. And I yeah. think like I really love Ellsworth Kelly's work, where you know some of the work was obviously made by chance and picking out colors and things like that. I quite like the unexpected. One series of work that I made before was I felt really blocked. I didn't really know what to stitch, was a bit unsure. Mm -hmm. So I got a dictionary, stopped it on a random page. And then the word that it stopped on was processed. (gasps) Wow. (laughs) Ironic, seeing as I was a bit stuck. (laughs) You can't can't make life up, can you, Stacey? That's the thing, what we all need to learn. That is ironic. You were stuck and you didn't know what to do. So you looked at the dictionary and you finished up with the word process from a random sticking your finger in it. (laughs) Amazing. Go on, carry on. Sorry. (laughs) No, that's fine. It's almost like that boomerang of like coming back and hitting you on the head or something. (laughs) But it was like... (laughs) <laughs> so I just like brainstorm like what does this mean and um what could you know like and I really like I get really nerdy about this but I love synonyms for words and yeah. looking in the thesaurus and and I started from there I started to think about cycles and the process of things and movements and mm-hmm. then I looked at the tides and the moon and again it went yeah. back to this kind of idea of gravity and space and all that sort of stuff so I remember creating a series of work which literally was inspired by the gravitational pull of the moon on water and I was looking at patterns from maps and graphs and all sorts of things like that and that dictated the the shape of my stitches and I use a sketchbook and I draw in my sketchbook and write my ideas down yeah and then even looking back through that the other day you know just reading stuff that I'd written and how I was feeling at the time and then these little drawings next to it part of this healing process and I think Mm -hmm. you know somebody out there that might be struggling with something that life's you know decided to throw them like it could even be a way of journaling maybe having a sketchbook drawing mm. in it collecting things finding things that interest people and and then making something from it I guess that's the beauty of creativity really and you know you could go to the pound shop set yourself a challenge or whatever and <laughs> get something for a pound and can turn it into something else you know just anything yeah yeah our charity shop or something like that would be better (laughs) but just putting things to use rather than sitting around and worrying about stuff it might might help very very wise and very powerful words there Stacey about the power of creativity and you know you're very painful and very personal journey that you've bravely and kindly shared with us today but look how it's affected your work but look at the beautiful work that you are creating in response which I find absolutely fascinating you know all of the 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 thoughts and process ironically (laughs) that's gone into all of this and yeah I I think anybody struggling lots of people talk about the power of creativity and the this slow stitch movement and the, the meditative if that's the right word effect of as you say, doing something like the cut work where you're you know, snipping all these little things and attaching them and it's the, the repetition of doing that. You have shown by your story the benefit. It's like been like a lifeline really, hasn't it, for you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it really has. I don't know where my work will move forwards, but, yeah. you know, I guess it's just this natural progression. It's almost like exploring the world around you and the things that you go through, but you do it through a way where you're making you're making things, yeah, you know, and yeah. or writing about it or yeah, I think that that's good for everybody. If, you know, give it a whirl. <laughs> give it a whirl. That's the best thing I think we can do with <laughs> with creativity. Give it a whirl. That's it. So yes, yeah, so I think a, a lot there, Stacey, for you to look forward to. Um, yeah. Three really interesting ideas there. You know, I love the uh, the kind of breath work and meditation and embroidery. I think that's a really fab idea. Poems. That are, you know, I'm sure you can find the the person, the right person for you to 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 work with that. 
think because yours is your works all it is about expressing emotions isn't it you know it, it's bringing yeah. emotions and thoughts into colors and and bright patterns basically um so i think that would work well and yeah i'm i'm sure everyone would love to see an, an exhibition you enjoyed the one that you you know you were part of so as you say your work gets lost on instagram doesn't it it's it can be boiled down to oh look at all those lovely patterns mm. in those circles and they're all like a centimeter square whereas really what we want to do is look at it peer at it poke our fingers in it if we're, we're never allowed <laughs> you know stroke it um and, and we can only do that when we can see it you know when we can see it in real life so what three brilliant things to look forward and and give it a whirl as you've just said yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah casually yeah just try it um but yeah thank you honestly it's been lovely to talk to you and thank you for you know taking the time and I hope everybody enjoyed listening to me waffle on <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone will have found a great deal of inspiration and comfort perhaps if people are in a similar situation as well from from what you've shared with us Stacey so um yeah. One of the reasons I like doing this is just the sheer range of, like, that's pathetic. Uh, why I love doing it is the sheer range <laughs> of stories and work and experience. And I'm just nosy and <laughs> I've really, really enjoyed digging away into the background of all your absolutely stunning work. So thank you so much, Stacey, oh, for... You for giving us some time on your precious half term and uh, <laughs> and, and coming to, to share your story with us today. So, yeah, everybody, go and check out Stacey on Instagram. And thankfully, she has been posting some of her past work because you can just see there, the, you know, the, the range and beauty of, of what she's posted there. So, and yeah, we'll look forward to watching you escape out the hoop there, Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, Stacey. It's been fun. Thanks, thanks, Sue. Cheers. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, then please join the Stitchery Stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released. It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and information around this podcast. Please visit stitcherystories.com. Of course, you can listen to Stitchery Stories on plenty of podcast apps at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and plenty more besides. You can also ask your smart speaker to play Stitchery Stories podcast too. But wherever you listen, why not leave us a rating and a review to encourage other people to listen too. I very much appreciate you taking the time to do that for me. So that is the end of our Stitchery Story for today. Keep stitching, keep smiling and keep creating your very own Stitchery Stories.